Hello everyone. Welcome to the fresh video cast episode of Cozy Conversations and all of us know that February is the month of love. Like we celebrate Valentine's Day on February. So I thought why not make a few videos on the theme of relationships because I believe our relationships can really determine the quality of our life, the quality of our emotional health. So I thought it would be very interesting. And while I was doing that, I came to realize that we actually have have five love languages so dr gary chapman who is the author of five love languages states that uh, there are five universal love languages and usually hamru uh, love language say it is uh, the primary love language falls under either of these five so i thought why not talk about love languages and why not talk about how we can make our relationships better so i have invited Punjita Pradhan ji for this episodes she is a mental health counselor and a therapist and if she's comfortable i'll also leave her social media link in the description box below so that you guys can follow her or you guys can like reach out to her if you want to so welcome to the episode punjita didi thank you so much mahima that was a lovely introduction so um, uh, going like i think uh, without any further ado i'd like to dive right into the topic so talking about the five love languages uh, there are five love languages so it's words of affirmation uh, quality time physical touch and uh, then acts of service acts of service and gifts receiving or giving gifts yeah so there are these five love languages so punjita di i would like you to explain that briefly for our audience okay so um relationship is something that involves two people and when there are two people there's definitely a need to communicate what we feel how we feel and how we like to express those uh, feelings or emotions so uh, like uh, mayuma said the five love languages that dr gary chapman has outlined um uh, words of affirmation is uh, something that you know like a words of affirmation is uh, a kind of love language where people value uh kind words or you know like words of encouragement uh maybe they value uh empathy over the situation also words of encouragement support so that is what words of affirmation people who value words of affirmation will uh prefer as their primary love language and similarly there is uh acts of service where you do things that may uh feel um, that that may make your partner feel supported and uh also then we have uh, the uh receiving or giving gifts where we uh learn what kind of gifts or you know like what can make uh, our partner happy uh this does not necessarily mean that it's a very materialistic inclination it's it it's more about for people who value the idea that their partner has thought through the process of gifting them something uh also there is physical touch which is not necessarily just having sex but sex is also one of them but physical touch uh it means hugging uh kissing uh providing support maybe when you are in public and your partner is nervous just giving them a reassurance touch so um for and we have one more uh which is uh quality time quality time yeah <clears throat> excuse me so quality time is when we uh are for people who value undivided attention and you know like spending time together hanging out together uh so these are generally uh the five primary love languages that we have So yeah talking about the five love languages it can be very difficult to remember them by names so forgive us for that pause but again having said that uh, i took this test a week back so when i was preparing for this shoot i actually took a test of my love language and i'll also leave that test in the description box below so that if if you guys have never tested your love language i'd highly highly encourage you go take that test I think taking that text uh, test would provide you a better context of the conversation that we are going to have today and even if not right now then maybe later on I I would highly recommend taking that test because it really helps so in case of my love language my love language my primary love language is words of affirmation 
followed by quality time then gift giving and in the fourth comes physical touch and fifth is acts of service <laughs> and this was actually when i since sabo mile to love language ko test li and tha pai it was actually moment of epiphany for me ki e mere to you love language boy ro i react in these ways right sir so i actually it was a moment of epiphany for me so uh, punjita di what are the tips that you'd like to give to people who have different kind of love languages like for instance if i have words of affirmation what are a few do's and to not do's that my partner or people around me should take care of you have a partner if so then maybe you are taking notes right now so words of affirmation is you know like if you say my primary love language is words of affirmation that it means that you pay more attention to your partner when they are expressing their you know like uh, their love or their support for you through their words like the the way they say their things uh it does not mean that you do not uh, or you disregard other you know like uh love languages because uh like uh, like dr gary chapman says it is a universal thing that somehow or the other we have all these languages maybe something is more like one of the love languages more dominant but we are somehow like you know i'm speaking all the all the five languages So if someone says like you know i mean if you have uh, words of affirmation as your primary uh, love language then it means that for your partner it is important to understand that you know like you have a need that is uh, very well received like in form of support when they express it through words like through words of encouragement or empathizing when you are going through a difficult time or you know uh, something like that and if if someone has words of affirmation as their primary language then it probably also means that you know i mean uh there are cultures where they express their love by joking or teasing and and that might not be comfortable for you so maybe uh the person should uh you know like understand that uh the better way or or uh, a way to make uh mahima feel secure in the relationship is by supporting her through kind words and you know like uh just motivating and encouraging her that will really do the trick <laughs> so i think that's very true like one not to do with me is because my primary love language is words of affirmation i do not forgive people when they insult me or when they say something you know like uh-huh. even reese may bonny ko bola hai na that for me to forget that and for me to forgive that person for saying that it really it really bogs me down so mala the insult garnu is a big no no for people who have words of affirmation as their primary language now talking about the four other languages what are some other tips about that like uh, let's say gift giving ko kaise ko love language tha bani what are some do's and not to do's for that love language so okay if somebody has receiving or giving gifts as the primary language it means that uh maybe and in some occasions or you know like when they feel special or they want to express like a lot of support which they might not be able to express through the words of affirmation they might use receiving or gifting love as their primary language so uh like i mentioned earlier it's it does not necessarily have to be a materialistic like you know uh, sort of a practice it's more about how much time and how much consideration i'm putting into what the other person needs so that is why like receiving and giving gifts makes uh, the whole process like more interesting and also more uh, adorable for the person and uh, yeah like it's important to understand like uh, you know what kind of gifts they they prefer because uh when you when you are trying to understand the other person it's not just limited to you know like the five love languages but it's also a lot about understanding what triggers the person or what makes the person happy so giving gifts i mean uh for someone who likes to you know like uh dress up and uh wear nice clothes then maybe that would be an ideal gift to gift and if someone is more into gadgets and you know like other sort of things then maybe that is uh, what can be gifted so it's basically uh, the whole effort that you put into you know like gifting someone is what is more valuable than just the gift the value of the gift itself so yeah 
So I think two points that I need to consider here are that for people who have gift giving as the primary love language, maybe their partners or people around them can be very mindful of what they need and then give them accordingly. And one pro tip that I'd like to give here is that for people who have gift giving as the primary love language, it really hurts them when people forget their birthdays or when people forget their anniversaries. So this is something that I noticed in one of my cousins. So she has gift giving as her primary love language and it really bogs her down when someone forgets her birthday, someone forgets her anniversaries. She goes like, maybe that person doesn't even love me. They said it through perspective, Mazan. So if you have a partner or if uh, your family member has the gift giving as a primary love language then it's it's important to not forget their birthdays and anniversaries now moving towards the third love language quality time what is what are the tips uh, that people who have quality time as a primary love language should take care of uh, it's about identifying things that you enjoy doing together and you know like uh, like i mentioned like providing undivided attention during during that period of time so uh, it could mean like, you know, even watching movies together or going for walks or doing the errands together or uh, just identifying activities that you can do together without, uh, without uh, having any divided attention, you know, like without, without divided attention. So uh, anything that uh, is enjoyable for both of you that will definitely uh, create like you know I mean a very harmonious sort of a moment for for both of both the partners uh, yeah I, I guess that's and one point that I'd highlight I'd like to highlight here is undivided attention mm -hmm. for people who have quality time as their primary love language they need undivided attention so you might say that okay I'm just with my wife or I'm with my partner all day mm -hmm. So, why bother? It's not like that. The partner needs undivided attention. So, it might be 20 minutes or 2 hours, but the value of that attention is very important for people yeah. who value quality time. Absolutely. And for people who value uh, quality time, it's also important that, you know, like when you're spending time together, you're actually listening to each other. You're actually being aware about, you know, like, their presence, uh, what's making them comfortable, what's making them uncomfortable. So, yeah, and if, if like, especially for people uh, who value quality time or who value undivided attention, it's, it's basically uh, something that, you know, like, enhances the quality of the relationship also, and it helps to develop more meaningful relationships than just two people sitting together, but, uh, just being lost in their mobiles or you know like just being uh, I mean you you can have those times but like Mahima said either two hours or two minutes you know like you can decide how much time and uh, what activities you can do together yeah pro tip for people who have quality time as the primary love language it's important for the partners to not use phones while talking to them because that might make them feel very disrespected and very so please if your partners of your family members love language is quality time do not use phone when talking to them uh, so th moving towards the fourth love language which is acts of service uh, what are some of the tips that people should remember when their partner has acts of service as a primary love language. So acts of service, for people who value acts of service as their primary love language, for them, it is very important to feel supported throughout their daily lives, like, you know, with the things they do, running errands or anything uh, uh, that can be done together, you know, like that can be a shared sort of a responsibility. So they really value uh, sharing those responsibilities. And also sometimes uh, we all have those vulnerable and stressful moments and, uh, you know, like just helping them out through and uh, just guiding them through the process of the challenges that they are facing is really what they value, uh, uh, value in terms of their uh, love language. So it's very important to understand that, you know, like, uh, acts of service is not something that you do even when you don't want to do uh, it's very important to remember that but at the same time 
it's also something that we all thrive on when we we when somebody does like you know some kind of a service for us then it really can make us feel worthy uh, at times when you know like we feel lost or we, we are feeling stuck so it's a very uh, important love language and uh, isma say i'll give an example of my mom so uh, based on how much i know her though i need to take her test separately someday but based on how much i know her i believe that my mom's primary love language is acts of service and that is one of the reasons why i often find that she gets really annoyed when i'm not helping her with the household chores or when there's a lot of responsibility that she needs to take care of and she needs to do that all alone she gets really annoyed so one pro tip is that if your partner has acts of service as their primary love language then it's very important to know the kind of responsibilities that they are taking and if they feel overburdened or pressured at any time then just try to make it possible to lighten their pressure by doing whatever you can so we come towards the last love language which is physical touch so what are some of the tips that people who have physical touch as their primary love language should keep in their mind yeah okay for uh, someone who values physical touch as the primary love language it is very difficult to understand the other partner's primary love language because you know like a lot of the times this may be the cause of conflict in the relationship mm. so uh, first of all it's very un- important to understand uh, your partner's love language and how they feel about being physically touched uh, because touch physical touch is very different in different cultures like here it's very uh, uh like we we don't use physical touch as our expression of love whereas uh in other western countries uh, physical touch is very uh, a very prominent love language so in if your love language is physical touch and you feel like by uh participating in mutual se- uh, sex or mutual intercourse then that enhances your relationship then it's very important to uh express yourself in the same manner and if you have your right partner or if you have a partner who understands they'll definitely participate uh, with you in the process but if if your partner is someone who may not prefer physical touch as often it is also very important to understand that uh you know like they're not judging you but it's just how they express themselves and they probably feel it's not necessary yeah so i think not only with physical touch but with any any of the five lo- love languages that you might have as your primary love language it's very important to communicate that with your partner like for instance i'll i'll share my own personal example one flaw that i have is i do not communicate i expect the other person to understand jolly were like them conflict or on so now that i think of it maybe i should have already warned my previous partner or maybe i should already tell people around me that see words of affirmation my primary love language so when you guys insult me or when you guys see something it it might be even out of anger it really it really bothers me it's also my responsibility to communicate that and often times i'm you to want to be see right cons okay we think that okay our partners are supposed to know that what our love language is by themselves but that might not always be the case it's very important to communicate our love language with not only with our partners but also with people around us so they can then take efforts from their side to make us feel loved now one interesting question that i had was that because uh, or uh, was of affirmation is my primary love language but does that in any way mean ki unse any other love languages or like ignore gor new so like uh, is it important for my partner just to praise me and tell me okay i love you i love you one titi matre gor da puk cha hola ta that is a very uh, i don't know question that i was very curious to ask uh definitely not like i said earlier like we use all these five languages and perhaps like with uh you know like so what happens is uh a relationship involves two people right so two people who have had their own experiences and who have had their own perceptions about these experiences and them coming together and them like you know i mean fulfilling their needs like uh, emotional needs and physical needs and all these needs together working these needs together uh it's definite it definitely does not mean that you know like when you have a one primary love language then you just completely ignore or uh, the other language do, languages does not matter it's it's more of uh, which of our language is more uh, prominent like which is more dominant in terms of like what we use uh, 
uh, or what what uh, you know like what we identify as a love language in the other person but we are also using other languages in one way or the other so it 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 is definitely not to say that you know like uh, i'm just like one love language i speak only one love language understanding these love languages and understanding each other also gives us an opportunity to learn the languages ourselves too so you know like in a relationship it's not only about the other person making us feel loved but it's also mm. about us loving the other person the way they want or they need to be loved right so yeah yeah so i think that is also very important that okay like mero primary love language was of affirmation hola so it might be important for my partner to express themselves verbally when in a relationship with me but that does not mean that they can overlook all the other love languages mm-hmm. all the other languages would uh, definitely add cherry on the top of the cake and it's very important for to be time time ma aus bit bit ma aus that's also very important mm-hmm. and uh, it's also important for us to learn new ways to express ourselves because uh like communication is very essential to relationship uh you know like understanding ourselves and expressing what we understand is also very important for human beings so uh you know like also learning new ways to express ourselves will always be a uh, a growth like you know process for us too so yeah yeah i mean like uh, imagine that my partner just tells me i love you every morning one day i'll get bored na i'll want him to bring me gifts also yeah, yeah. so yeah like learning new love languages or finding other ways of uh, unsini also expressing love is always fun so what to like what can be done in situations where or uh, i'll just give you an extreme example so because my love language is words of affirmation and last my only love language bonding so any acts of service so what can be done if my partner supposedly has acts of service as a primary love language because i feel that because mero love language is words of affirmation i'll be more um, generous monumna in providing encouraging words to my partner but that again might not be his primary love language right it uh, his primary love language could be acts of service which is not my primary love language so what can be done in those situations okay first of all i'd like to start by asking you how what do you think about like you know i mean you said it's it's less of a priority as a love language for you but uh how do you use act of service in your communication like you know when you are expressing yourself i'm sure like you use it in some form of or the other if if you are aware about it because we all like you know i mean whenever we are with someone we all like to do things for them and you know like make them feel special even in families friends and all of that so uh there might be a reason why you may not be so comfortable with act of service as as a primary love language you know so if we know like why why that makes you uncomfortable or why act of service like you know when some someone expresses act of acts of service why it makes you uncomfortable then the best thing to do is for you both to sit down and talk about this like communicate about this uh express yourself and say like this is why i feel uncomfortable about like you know the things you do uh it's not it's not about you it's about like you know how you do things and how that makes me feel a certain way uh it does not mean to say that you are wrong because it's a very important to you know like uh not get the person triggered and uh just letting them understand what what uh what you feel when they express themselves in that manner at the same time it's also important to give your partner the opportunity to express themselves uh, about what they feel about providing act of service as their primary language you know so uh, and once you both have talked about this then perhaps the next step you could do is identify areas where he should not use act of service as a primary language like you know i mean if that is something that uh, makes you feel very dependent on the person then uh, you can just let him know that in certain areas this is how i can do things and at the same way like you know i mean when he is expressing uh, or or your partner is expressing themselves through act of service then it's just about understanding that you know like the person is doing it their way and things just become very mutual then <laughs> I think communication is the key and one one very important pro tip that again I'd like to give here is this is also something that I learned at my emotions matter mm-hmm. 
so our organization mapani what we say is that it's very important to not make the other person feel like they are being blamed हुन्छ नि हामीले अर्को मान्छेलाई तैले यस्तो गरिस अथवा हुन्छ नि तिमीले यस्तो गर्यौ भनेर त्यो ब्लेम इट्स भेरी इम्पोर्टेन्ट टू कम आउट अफ द्याट ब्लेम ल्याङ्ग्वेज वेन वी स्पिक टू इच अदर सो इफ आई एम सेइंग द्याट इट्स भेरी इम्पोर्टेन्ट टू कनेक्ट थिंग्स टू आवर फिलिङ्स एन्ड नट टू व्हाट दे डिड सो हुन्छ नि रादर देन ब्लेमिङ द अदर पर्सन कि यु डिड दिस यु डिड द्याट भन्दा पनि आई फिल दिस आई फिल द्याट अ प्रो टिप इज द्याट युजिङ मोर आई स्टेटमेन्ट्स देन यु स्टेटमेन्ट्स वाइल कम्युनिकेटिङ इन रिलेसनसिप्स कुड रियली हेल्प सो फर इन्स्टेन्स फर इन्स्टेन्स इफ आई लाइक टू गिव एन इक्जाम्पल लाइक रादर देन सेइङ दैट यु टेक अ लर अफ माई स्पेस आई कुड से दैट आई फिल भेरी अनकम्फर्टेबल और आई फिल भेरी डिपेन्डेन्ट अन यू वेन यू डू थिङ्स फर मी सो वेन आई चेन्ज दैट फ्रम यू टू आई द होल Uh, vibe of that communication itself changes which i think is very very important True. it's it's always about uh not what you say but how you say it so yeah uh so yeah as you said it's not about what you say it's about how you say it so kasari communicate gar rakhu chu herna pani it's very very important and uh if you'd like to know more about how can we move from once any move away from the blame mindset you can always reach out to us at my emotions matter uh, i'll also leave the link to our organization in the description box below so moving towards the last question like as i said once any sometimes we can sulk when doing things for our partner like for instance let's say that uh, my partner's love language is gift giving i could give him the gift but i could do that sulking garnai parcha maile ta mal na gar ta risai halsa ni i have to do it more than i want to do it it in go into like i have to do it mentality so what can be done in those kind of relationships and uh, are those actually the hallmarks of unhealthy relationships that's something that i really wanted to ask mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah this is very interesting because Uh like I had also mentioned you know I mean you don't have to do things just for the sake of doing things then it becomes uh not a love language but more like a you know like forced forced language and it's not mutual in any way Uh what happens is you know like uh since there are two people involved in a relationship this is probably the third time I'm saying it but you know like two people involved in a relationship and they come from their own like background of experiences and they have their own perceptions about these experiences so let's suppose one of the partner has abandonment trauma uh, or has been tra- uh, traumatized by you know like uh, being abandoned or being rejected uh, most likely the person might uh, have a very uh, you know like uh, they might need a lot of like attention and like you know quality time and words of affirmation and physical touch and all of these uh, love languages and uh sometimes there are also chances that people who have experienced trauma might uh you know like bec- might end up becoming codependent in the relationship and when mm. that codependency starts taking place then uh you know like for the other person for the other partner to be like giving that attention 24/7 becomes very unhealthy it is definitely a, a important sign that you know like uh, that requires both of your attention and if the trauma is really deep and if it is a very uh, and has left a very profound or you know like a very big damage in the life of your partner then it's always important to seek therapy it's always important to look into those things instead of uh, just trying to solve yourself because it requires a specific set of skills and you know like uh, knowledge to support people through trauma and uh, that is when you can again express your love by supporting your partner through their therapies or you know like treatment or whatever they go through so Yeah. Actually this reminds me of the last interview that I had on arranged marriage versus love marriage. So Dr. Pooja had beautifully put it that we are all responsible for our own happiness. We cannot consider the other person to uh, come and completely transform our lives and I think this is very important and yeah like if we are believing that someone else is responsible for our happiness if someone else is supposed to come and make us happy if someone else is supposed to come and uh, change our lives magically then maybe it's really time to consider therapy because uh, as much as relationships are an important hallmark of your life it's also very important to share a good relationship with yourself like 
like uh, in the five love languages as well uh, there was a very interesting post that i saw which was posted by a therapist about how uh, yeah five love languages mapani we can also provide ourselves self love mm-hmm. so for instance if my love language is words of affirmation then it also becomes my responsibility to tell to tell good things to myself and i've also started doing it very recently but now i've, I've i i can actually notice some changes in myself so these days if i do something really nice like it could be just little things supposedly if one of my video comes out to be really nice i'll go and tell myself that i'm very proud of myself mm-hmm. that i did that or even if i help someone i'd also say that i'm proud that i did that so it's very important to also love yourself and not consider the other person unsani or ko manche lena wala ara khushi banunu parcha or ko manche to unsani mero husband ho mero boyfriend ho or ko manche to mero girlfriend ho uli to mero lagi sabai to garne parcha ni bhanne tyo mentality bhanda pani आपको लव लैंग्वेज बुझे व्हाट कैन आई डू फॉर माय सेल्फ सो इफ योर लव लैंग्वेज इज मे बी एक्ट्स ऑफ सर्विस देन मे बी यू कुड आल्सो टेक द रिस्पांसिबिलिटी ऑफ आस्किंग फॉर हेल्प व्हेन यू नीड इट इफ योर लव लैंग्वेज इज गिफ्ट्स गिविंग देन मे बी इट्स हाई टाइम दैट यू आल्सो बाय गिफ्ट्स फॉर योर सेल्फ मे बी इफ योर लव लैंग्वेज इज क्वालिटी टाइम देन मे बी यू शुड आल्सो स्पेंड टाइम विथ योर सेल्फ तो आपने लगी के इज वेरी इंपोर्टेंट एंड एज पुंजिता दीदी सेड दैट इफ यू फील लाइक समवन एल्स इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर योर हैप्पीनेस और इफ यू नीडिंग दैट कॉन्स्टेंट वैलिडेशन एंड अटेंशन फ्रॉम योर पार्टनर इट कुड बी एन अंडरलाइंग इंडिकेशन दैट यू नीड therapy so to process all the emotions from your past kina bhane hamro past ma kati dheri kura haru bhairako huncha some things might seem very small ke nai effect garcha ra tile malai bhanna tesari huna sakcha tara when you really dig down uh, dig deeper it could really be affecting you so this the situation ma chai therapy lina ekdam important cha so thank you so much punjita di for being here and talking about the five different kind of love languages uh, uh, are there any final thoughts that you'd like to leave our audience with uh best is to not complicate relationship by overthinking about it you know like uh if you are overthinking then it probably means that there's something that needs to be healed or there's something that needs to be addressed and like mohima also mentioned in sunny relationship are the hallmark of your life and whatever uh if you have a healthy relationship your growth in all other aspects of life becomes very easy and it be- it comes like you know with l- less of a struggle but if you do not have a harmonious relationship then everything else also becomes like a struggle so it's very important to understand this and i hope everybody has a very harmonious relationship and thank you so much mahima for bringing me here providing me the platform and also my emotions matter thank you so much uh thank you so much punjita uh, didi and uh, uh, before we wrap up i'd li- like to leave you guys with two important notes first i'd highly highly again recommend you guys to go and take the love language test i've l- i've left the link to the love language test in the description box below so that you guys can go and do it it can really help you understand yourself and even if you guys are feeling lazy to do that this one reflection question that i'd like to leave you guys is that what kind of love language do you mostly resonate with like what what is your way of expressing love maybe when you reflect on that you'll know given any makun kind of love language ma parso because because my love language is words of affirmation i usually notice myself giving a lot of appreciation to people around me i give praises very generously i go on praising around people and that also made me realize that okay my love language is words of affirmation so just ask yourself like what how do you express love most often hopefully when you answer that you can also like somehow figure out what your love language is and yeah taking the love language test is very important uh, so i hope that this video will help you both in your personal professional and romantic relationships and i'll see you guys in the next video as well until then take care of yourself and your relationship Bye bye